by 2020, a third of us will be obese. However, in the US, they're already there. Experts forecast that within just three years, obesity figures will increase to over half the US population. So to find out how and why things have got so bad, I've come to the epicenter of the crisis, Evansville, Indiana, officially named America's fattest city. This city in the Midwest has a population of 117,000. And a massive 38% of them are obese. Do you think you're reaching crisis point with all this? I, th I think we're reaching a crisis level. Over the next eight weeks, Dr. Christian will be reporting from the front line, witnessing the far-reaching effects of a sedentary lifestyle and a bad diet. They come here for fast food, they don't come here for salad. And that should serve as a grave warning to us all. We'll be hearing from people who've lost limbs to obesity. I got out of the tub and all of a sudden I heard this crunch and then this gush of blood. And from the team whose job it is to care for them. The heaviest patient I've lifted is 765 pounds. Wow, well over 50 stone then. For me, cheesecake was like crack cocaine. But for some, that addiction can be fatal. Christian's heading to the Pierre funeral home to meet a man who knows all about the ever-expanding population. Because he makes the biggest coffins in the United States. Keith. Hello. Oh my goodness me. It looks like a hot tub. This is our large casket. It's 52 inches wide. It'll hold over a thousand pounds. So we're talking 70, 80 plus stone. How many of these are called for? In the 1990s, yeah. this casket didn't even exist. Right. In 2000, we sold 12, and we're selling about four of this type per month. So can I have a look inside sure. it? Sure. Is that all right? Absolutely. Oh, golly, it's heavy. I mean, it's absolutely mind-boggling. Well, you can actually get three people in this casket. This casket will require probably two grave plots, maybe three. It won't fit in a hearse. And I would imagine the person that's going into this this size is not very old either. Unfortunately not. The average age for my records is around 45 years old. Oh, we've had shocking. We've had caskets, large caskets, not this size, but caskets for as young as 11 years old. I'm really distressed. We are going to see the first generation that is not going to live as long as their parents lived because it's, of this. When you tell me you've seen 11 year olds, I just... I'm, a, I'm lost for words. I, I'm really upset by that. It is. It is a tragedy. And I know this happens, but when you see mm -hmm. the box that you actually use, it's not exaggeration, this is not a no, film This set. is a real casket. We have it too easy, too much. Uh, when you go to any fast food restaurant, a standard beef patty used to be six ounces. Now they're 10, 12, a third of a pound of hamburger. Are you kidding me? Who needs a third of a pound of hamburger? No one. No one. We think more is better. More is not better. It's clear that obesity is a disease that has far-reaching effects in death as well as in life. But before Super Size and Super Skinny enter the feeding clinic, Christian's giving Helen a Super Size kick start by sending her to the US for a terrifying glimpse of her possible future. My name is Pauline Potter. I am 48 years old and I am 50 stone. I think about food a lot. Spaghetti and French bread, chocolate, ice cream. I'm really into brownies, homemade cookies, or anything that's found in a bakery. I'm a compulsive overeater. Coming up, Helen sees what life's really like when you're so big you can barely move. What the heck? and gets a supersized shock when the doctor calls. Surprise. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> Before supersize and super skinny swap diets, Dr. Christian has sent our supersizer stateside to show her just where extreme food addiction can lead. My long-term goal right now is to lose half of me, which would be 25 stone. Or in other words, that's one Helen Simpkin. 
Dr. Christians organized for Helen to spend two days in California with Pauline Potter, and he'll be flying out himself to ensure Helen learns some valuable lessons. Come in. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, I'm Pauline. I'm Helen. Hi. How was your flight? It was okay, a little uncomfortable, but it was okay. That's good. Um, Dylan, could you come help me please, honey? Dylan, this is Helen. This is Hi, my son, Helen. Dylan. This is a daily routine. He's a very good boy, but I'm sure that he will welcome the day that he won't have to help me any longer and I could just do it by myself. So I'm sorry to be undressed in front of you. It's okay. But, uh, oh. It's just quite shocking. I don't want to get like that because I've got kids and I don't want them to have to help with me. Like her son has to help her. Uh, once you get to 700 pounds, it really pushes your body past its limits. Like, I'm short of breath all the time just to walk 10 feet from the couch to the bathroom. I have knee pain every day. I have to get a spoon. I don't have a good life, you know. I hear children running outside of my window, you know, laughing and playing, and it's like nobody knows I'm there, you know. I want to get out. I want to dance. I want to drive to the store, and I don't want my son the last 20 years of his life to be remembering that he had to help his fat mother get dressed. Pauline's always loved food and has been overweight since childhood, but spending nine years married to a man who loved big women got her where she is today, immobile. Pauline uses a special bus service, but it doesn't always run smoothly. Oh. On some buses, the combined weight of Pauline and her wheelchair is too much for the hydraulic lift to bear. What? What the heck? Unfortunately for Pauline, today's one of those days. Just feel really so embarrassed for her. People are probably looking and... Just have to make it fast, OK, because I can't stand up long. I don't know how she does that. I would never go out if it was like that. Oh, my feet hurt. Ugh. I'm hating this still. I'm so hating it. Pauline takes Helen to one of her favourite restaurants to indulge their shared passion. How does food make you feel? I know that I'm happy while I'm eating it, and then after I'm done eating it, I'm not happy anymore. I'm sad, you know. Then I sit here while I'm so miserable, and I cuss myself out, and I'm like, I'm never doing that again. And then the next day, I do it again anyway. Why did I let it get to this point? That's my biggest regret. Because I've seen you today and the struggles that you have to put up with and how hard it is for you, I know that I won't be putting on any more weight. From now on, I'll just be losing weight. Good for you. I'm, that makes me happy because I wouldn't wish this on anyone. You know, it's like, it's a big struggle every day. It's a big struggle. Unbeknown to Helen, Dr. Christians arrived to check our supersizers getting the message and to see where Pauline's going so wrong. They do have a lot of similarities. They both like their junk food. They both have children whose lives really they're missing out on because they cannot uh, go out and about with them very much anymore. And both of them really need help performing just the activities of day-to-day -day living. I'm the biggest mum at the school as oh, well, yeah. yeah. Surprise. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> oh. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm OK, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. Pauline, I'm Christian. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hey. Hi, uh, this is my son, Dylan. Dylan, good Hi. to meet you as well. How are you doing? Back home, Dr Christian wants to find out how being so grossly overweight has affected Pauline's health. I do have knee pain every day. Just taking that little three-inch step over the threshold is hard for me. And do you see similarities there with you yeah I do my knees are not good um, if I 
crouched down, I really struggled to pull myself back up. This is not going to get better, it's only going to get worse yeah. if you carry on, and you, you are living proof of that, aren't you? Yeah. The big problem you had, actually, was that you didn't develop any serious medical things, you know, because yeah. actually you could just chug along yeah. and you didn't get any shockers, you didn't get the diabetes diagnosis, the heart attack, the, you know, the high blood pressure diagnosis, did you? Which yeah. may have made you wake up and go, Right, well, it's helped me to not think it was important enough to take care of yet. And Helen, I know you're pretty much half Pauline's weight. What I don't want you to think is, oh, well, that's all right then. No, I don't. I'm only half her weight. Cause Even I struggle. Pauline was your weight once. Yeah. What? Like, I'd give anything to weigh what you weigh right now. I would give anything to not have to, you know, burden my son. It's quite easy to see that Pauline has no quality of life whatsoever. The really sad thing, though, is looking at her son, Dylan, who's 18 years old. He has no quality of life either because of the state his mother's in. Pauline says she's worried about her son and that she hopes to lose weight, but is she really serious? Her freezer's full of waffles, burritos, ice cream and ready meals. And then, I mean, big, big bags of potato chips and tortillas and stuff like this. Oops. I, I noticed that all the sodas that you have as well... They're all the kind of full-fat, full-sugar sodas, aren't they? None of them are diet versions. I don't like the diet ones. You can't carry on drinking these. Right. Because they're so high in sugar and calories, you know. I mean, you are really going to have to find an alternative. The human in me really hopes that Pauline does this and lose the weight. The doctor in me finds it very hard to believe that she actually will. Has seeing the state Pauline's got herself into had the desired effect on Helen? It's been eye-opening. I hoped it would shock you a bit. It did. But it's been relatively easy for Pauline to get to that size, hasn't it? Yeah, like it's been relatively easy for me to have put on the last £100 that I've put on. What's this going to do for you? More than anything anybody could have said before, this has done the trick. Christian leaves the ladies to say goodbye. OK, take care. You too. It was nice meeting you. I think Helen will hopefully be helped by this. I think she will think every time she goes to eat something she'll remember me or my size and think I don't want to get to that point so I better stop now. I'm in the epicenter of the US obesity crisis, Evansville, Indiana, officially America's fattest city to investigate why Americans are getting bigger and bigger and to find out what we in the UK can learn from where America has gone so very wrong. The Deaconess Hospital is at the forefront of the fight against fat in Evansville. This state-of-the-art facility houses its very own weight loss surgery centre and a bustling diabetes unit. And with over a third of patients overweight or obese, they've got their work cut out. Obesity-related heart problems are all too common, and today Carmelo Ramos, who weighs 28 and a half stone, has been rushed in. Mr. Ramos came in with some chest pain, so they want to do a screening for any significant blockages in the heart arteries. To find out how well Carmelo's heart is functioning, he needs to have a cardiac stress test. Usually this would be done using a treadmill, but due to Carmelo's size, the doctors have to do an alternative procedure. Dr. Moore's come in to administer the drug that's going to speed up our patient's heart. This will stimulate the effects of exercise so he can assess how the heart is functioning when it's working hard. Now, if this may make your heart speed up even more, okay, don't be alarmed. Mr. Ramos's heart is now beating at the rate it would be if he were running. His blood pressure is 235 over 117. I just went to 40 max of WME. Blood pressure of 235 or 117 is getting on for fairly high. So you can see now on the screen, his heart is really banging away. The patient's not very comfortable because it's, it's quite an anxious feeling, this. Can you write your pain for me right now, zero to ten? Oh, God, it's nice. Despite the chest pains, Carmelo's heart is functioning normally. But it's a tragedy that he has to be given drugs to increase his heart rate rather than just getting on a treadmill. However, for some, obesity has more permanent consequences. Um, Nancy has uh, a diabetic ulcer and she developed an infection in that ulcer and now it has spread to another part of her foot as well. But it's a bit of a mess down there. Yeah, it has been. And you've got a toe missing. 
Yeah, one toe missing. And your whole ankle is very deformed as well. It's sort of all gone over to one side. And this is, I presume, what we call a Charcot joint. Yes. She's had some structural changes in her foot um, from damage to the nerves from diabetes. And how old are you? 55. Do you feel young to be getting this? Oh, yeah. Do you think there's something you could have done to stop it? I don't know. I think I might could have stopped it. Has diabetes problems, obesity problems got more common since you've been here? Big majority of the patients that I see are obese. So you're getting obese. busier? Yes, definitely. Sometimes it feels like a losing battle. Um, it can be frustrating to deal with patients that don't seem to be helping themselves as I'm trying to help them. Mm. Nancy's predicament should be a cautionary tale for all of us. I'm extremely nervous about today in case I've not lost much weight. However, in myself, I feel better mentally and physically. There was an awful lot for you to do. Yeah. But I think you've kind of done it, haven't you? Yes. You've lost a stone and four pounds. Okay. And not only that, you've lost two inches around your middle, three inches around there, three and a half inches yeah. around your leg. The way that I used to eat before was, it was horrible, it was no way to live. I feel brilliant now, fantastic, and just really positive about the future.